We're learning new details about the plea deal reached between the Department of Justice prosecutors and Hunter Biden. President Biden's son will plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and avoid prosecution on a separate felony gun possession charge allowing him to avoid any prison time. Two sources familiar with the agreement tell NBC News the deal includes a provision in which the U.S. attorney has agreed to recommend probation for the tax violations. Legal experts say the federal gun charge is a rarely used statute that makes it illegal for someone addicted to drugs to possess a weapon. This is the first time the Justice Department has brought charges against a child of a sitting president. The charges against Hunter Biden are the result of a five-year investigation by federal prosecutors, <laughs> FBI agents, and IRS officials. The investigation was led by the U.S. Attorney for Delaware, David Weiss, who was, was, a, appointed by? He was appointed by former President Donald Trump. Wait, most U.S. attorneys are moved on after a new president comes in nope. office. Are you saying that Joe Biden kept this Trump appointee yes, in this, Delaware? Yes, this man was appointed by Donald Trump yeah, and, and then permitted by President Biden to remain in office That's highly unusual, in order by the way. to continue the probe. Highly unusual. Talk about full transparency. Mm. An attorney for Hunter Biden issued a statement to NBC News reading in part, quote, with the announcement of two agreements between my client, Hunter Biden, and the United States <clears throat> Attorney's Office for the District of Delaware. It is my understanding that the five-year investigation into Hunter is resolved. However, Weiss's office stated yesterday that the investigation is ongoing. So, so now, th but before we, before we continue, uh, John Heilman, and before we hear the, the, the total stupidity uh, by Republicans just lying through their teeth about crimes in the Biden crime family, um, most people, most legal experts I talk to here actually have a very dialectical response to this uh, and, and a, a very dialectical analysis. They say if his last name were not Biden, these charges would have never been brought. That said, at the same time, at the same time, if his last name was not Biden, the plea deal would not have been as generous. And by the way, this is the same plea deal they basically offered Hunter uh, or that Hunter's people offered uh, the feds 18 months ago. Uh, and uh, based on on my reporting. Um, and, and so it's very interesting Feds wouldn't have brought this charge against somebody whose last name was not Biden. At the same time, uh, a lot of legal analysts think the Fed's deal may have been more generous because his last name was Biden. Um, it's a, it's an, an analysis I've heard, Joe, um, and, and I, God knows there are moments when uh, often we, uh, over the course of the last few years, have, uh, uh, since Donald Trump came into office and, and subsequently we've all, those of us who are not lawyers, even simple country lawyers like yourself that pretend to be lawyers uh, or do legal analysis. This is one where uh, I've heard a wide variety of things from a wide variety of lawyers. There's obviously a whole, in the non-ideological bar, people uh, have, have difference of opinion about the nature of, of this plea deal. It's certainly the case, the first part of that dialectical uh, is something that one hears all the time, which is that uh, in no aspect of this case uh, was likely to have been brought, let alone pursued uh, to this, uh, to this right. degree, if it weren't for the fact that, that Hunter Biden was named Biden. And, and again, I think it, it can't be said enough times. Uh, when you listen to people like Kevin McCarthy and others talking about the the two tier system of justice and the double standard, you just want you just want to say double standard. Know, here's this here's this Trump appointed uh, prosecutor who was kept in office by Joe Biden, something that that Donald Trump would never have done in the similar circumstance. Never. Can you never. imagine? Can you imagine an never. Obama appointed prosecutor looking into one of the Trump kids? When if Trump won the presidency and Trump say, you know what, uh, for both uh, matters of both substance and perception, I'm going to leave this Obama appointed prosecutor in uh, to look at Don Jr. Uh, because I just want to mm -hmm. make sure that everyone has full faith uh, in the legal system and it not being politicized. It's it's a, like a hallucinatory fantasy that, that could ever happen. And yet that's what Joe Biden did. And now all of these same Republicans who want to uh, take this up, who want to figure out some way to pivot away from Donald Trump's legal woes, uh, they focus mm -hmm. on this and say, oh, my God, two-tier standard of justice. He got a sweetheart deal. And you're like, guys, 
I mean, you're just, you just sound like morons when you say, say these things. You well, can say a lot of things about this, that. but not that. Add to that, Heilman, um, just putting it out there, uh, Ivanka and Jared, like, worked in the White House. They worked for Donald Trump. Billions Crazy. have come in from Saudi. There's so many questions. We're going to talk about kids. Do we even want to talk well, about kids? You, you know, the thing is, if if these these same Republicans and Hunter Biden did something had, wrong. had been complaining when Ivanka's, uh, Ivanka got, uh, I think it was oh, trademarks God, in China. China. She got licenses in China to sell. Uh, sell she traveled her, around the country her, campaigning. When she got license. It's true. Okay, uh, um, let me finish the sentence. Okay. She got licenses in China. I know. To sell her, her goods around the same time Donald Trump was meeting with President Xi. And, and Jared, uh, a guy I've communicated with an awful lot, $2 billion from the Saudis. $2 billion. And again, I mean, it's a lot of money. We yeah. haven't said much about it here. A lot of money. And, and, and I'm just saying, if Republicans... If Republicans are, are going to say this about Hunter Biden, then where's the other side of this? When they start talking about illegal influence peddling, because Sam Stein, well, first, here, here, here's, what, right. here's how Republicans humiliated well, they themselves yesterday. They were very yesterday. angry at yeah. the plea, calling this. this a, quote, sweetheart deal from the Justice Department. That includes House Speaker Kevin McCarthy who was pressed by a reporter on the fact that it was a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney who made the charging decision. Take a listen. It continues to show the two-tier system in America. If you were the president's leading political opponent, the DOJ tries to literally put you in jail and give you prison time. If you are the president's son, you get a sweetheart deal. Mr. Speaker, this is a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney that's held over into this administration. Why won't you accept it's done. the thorough investigation and to just accept it on its merits, given the person who investigated it? It was a thorough investigation, sir. So, so, why so won't you accept you, it? I'm no, asking you. But I'm asking you, so you believe it's a thorough investigation. I'm asking you. He, he can't. Add, of course, he well. can't. He can't answer this question. Earlier this month, that attorney David Weiss sent a letter to Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. In it, <clears throat> Weiss wrote that he'd been granted quote granted ultimate authority over the Hunter Biden case by Attorney General Merrick Garland. That included, as Weiss put it, responsibility for deciding when, where, and whether to file charges against the president's son. So Sam Stein again. I, I, for people that don't don't understand this, uh, don't understand how it works, uh, as, as John said, it is remarkable that Joe Biden allowed this guy to hold over something Donald Trump would never do. It's also remarkable. I mean, <clears throat> Tim Scott saying in front of that audience that Lady Justice must be blindfolded. I'm sitting there thinking, you know, we, we must treat people the same. These are the same people that overwhelmingly support Donald Trump being able to steal nuclear secrets and, and, and want to defund the FBI because the FBI went to retrieve some of the most important, uh, sensitive, classified documents the U.S. government has. And they're lecturing, Tim Scott is, is lecturing us, uh, uh, lecturing the 85% of Americans who think Donald Trump should even run for office because he stole nu nuclear secrets? Yeah, I mean, so I think it's helpful to understand uh, where the Republicans are come from, but to understand what they've been saying about Hunter Biden and what they've been investigating about Hunter Biden, because they're conflating a couple things here. For about a year and a half now, Republicans on the Hill have been insisting that Hunter Biden's private business dealings were secretly an attempt for him to enrich his father. Now, Hunter Biden was not investigated by David Weiss for those business dealings. He was investigated for tax avoidance and the illegal owning of a firearm. And for those allegations, he was, you know, he pled guilty in what I think ostensibly, if you ask any legal expert, was a fair resolution to that case. But House Republicans aren't talking about that. They're talking about an entirely different set of issues that they want to conflate into one big scandal. So that's why you have Kevin McCarthy and others coming out saying, how could they let him off? 
Well, they let them off because the, the crimes that they were looking at, the allegations they were looking into, were not what the Republicans wanted to look into. I think the bigger issue, though, here is you have a situation in which congressional Republicans are saying we need uh, justice, blind justice. Uh, there cannot be a two-tiered system. And you have leading presidential candidates, Donald Trump and now Tim Scott, and to a degree, Ron DeSantis, taking a stance that says the executive branch oversees the Justice Department and therefore can instruct the Justice Department to explicitly investigate uh, the president's uh, uh, enemies, its, his opponents, and so on and so forth. Donald Trump has <laughs> said he wants to appoint a special counsel to investigate Joe Biden. Tim Scott alluded strongly to doing the same in that clip that we, sh we saw. They are not themselves well, yeah. advocating for blind justice, but they want blind justice applied in this case. Well, well yeah, the interesting thing is, again, none of them protested two weeks before the 2020 presidential election when Donald Trump ordered his attorney general to arrest Joe Biden and Joe Biden's family. I mean, no, nothing ever happened like that before in American history, where a sitting president is behind in the polls and he orders his attorney general to arrest his opponent and his opponent's family. And Jonathan Lemire can't underline it enough. Can't underline it enough. So Wall Street Journal's uh, opinion page said, a lot of smoke here, no fire. We keep hearing about audio tapes. And then we hear there's nothing on audio tapes. Comer keeps, I mean, it, it, it is. And unfortunately, unfortunately, this term has been overused way too much. Maybe we've even overused it here. But this is straight out of Joe McCarthy's playbook. Yeah. This is McCarthyism, where you throw one unsubstantiated charge after another, after another, up against the wall. And we can tick through every one. And, and, and people who have been harshly critical of the media's response to this even admit when pressed, there are no crimes here. Could there have been unethical behavior? Sure. Should Hunter Biden have flown on Air Force Two when he was going over to China to make a business deal? No. Unethical behavior. You can, you can have a debate about that and then compare that to what Donald Trump did, compare that to what other presidents did. But again, nobody's come forward with a crime. It is all smoke, no fire, and a hell of a lot of McCarthyism here.